Hey, what's up everybody and thank you for watching another episode of The Messy Desk. This is my first official video of 2020 for The Messy Desk and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, what I do from the ending of 2019 to the beginning of 2020, how I go from one year to the next uh, as far as record keeping. Uh, I do have a CRM, you can learn about that here, how I just switched from Tave to Pixify. I do technically still have both accounts going uh, because I didn't just pull all the information off of one and then go to the other. Uh, I'm just kind of letting one fade out uh, while the other one uh, gains more steam, I guess you could say. So uh, in the meantime, I'm kind of uh, doing everything kind of a little bit more manually right now. But uh, what I'm going to show you is a spreadsheet that I use that I use to keep track of uh, all my clients and everything like that. It's kind of like a one sheet and it kind of gives me a quick overview uh, as far as how I got the client, uh, where they came from, uh, what I'm offering them, uh, the time of the event, all that kind of different stuff like that. It's all kept in kind of like a one spreadsheet. Uh, so I think that's really cool and very helpful. Um, it's a spreadsheet that I use through Google Docs, which is very similar to the uh, Google uh, Microsoft uh, Excel program. So anyway, I'm going to show you a little bit of that uh, on the screen here, so you can kind of see a little bit of the uh, uh, what goes into it. So anyway, all right. So this is a uh, 2019, and you could see at the beginning of the year I didn't have any events in January. This is already this is scrolled all the way up to the top. So I didn't have any events last year in uh, January. Only a couple here in. Uh, February, uh, and then it started to really take shape in uh, March, and then of course April, May, uh, June is really the the busy season, especially in my line of work. Uh, for those not familiar with it, I do a lot of uh, mitzvahs, and so anyway, uh, this is how the I keep track of how the leads came in, whether they came through a Facebook, a party planner. Uh, I only did one Groupon. <laughs> uh, I got rid of the Groupon after that event. Uh, and anyway, so whether they're a return client, things like that, uh, the date of the event, uh, the, their name, of course, uh, the brand that it's under. So I have several different brands. Uh, a lot of my events are going to be under Mitzvah Mayhem. So that's what you see here. Uh, and then the kind of service that I'm providing, whether it's photography, videography, photo booth, uh, those generally the main three. Uh, if I'm doing a DJ or flip books or something like that, those that would be on here. Uh, and then I used to keep track of who the salesperson was. Now, for the most part of the salesperson is just me so I decided instead of keeping track of my name uh, I decided to switch it to the time frame of the event so that way if I have an event let's say for June 1st you can see that from 12 to 5 is one event and that leaves the the nighttime uh, for 6 to 11 open so I was able to do both events and both events went well and they were both referred which was really cool as you can see here uh, and then I keep track of the status so there's uh, the good and then uh, I'm going to show you in 2019 how it looks for uh, in 2020 events coming up. But I also keep track of uh, what I charge for the event, uh, what of it they paid, whether they paid in full, whether there's still a balance, and then what I made after the event. So this profit here line is just uh, what the cost of goods sold. So whatever I paid staff, whatever I paid for equipment and supplies, gas, all related to that specific job, uh, this is what I made at the end of it. And then I also keep track monthly as far as uh, the average price that I charged and the average profit that I made for uh, each of those jobs. So it's kind of cool. I can see kind of like a, a running uh, tally. And then at the end of the year, I do the same thing. So, and then as far as status, I had this uh, one client that there's no show tattoos. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that might go into the status section. And then at the bottom, I compare those totals to the year before. So, and every year I do the same thing, 2019, 2018. So in 2019, 2018, I took my totals that were down here and I added them to the 2020. Uh, so then I can, you know, compare and contrast. So I then keep track of, uh, you know, the total amount of events that I did. I did less events this year because I, one, I was branching out. One was, you know, I do have a toddler now. So um, certain holidays, things like that, I try not to book events for. Um, so I did a little bit less events. Um, uh, did a little bit less jobs over the 1K mark, but uh, my 2K jobs went up and uh, my jobs 3K, I did one more job this year that was worth 3K. So, you know, as your pricing slowly goes up, you end up slowly uh, getting a little bit less uh, work because your price went up. So you got to re... Um, 
uh, remarket to that higher clientele. Um, so every year your price goes up slightly as, as it should. Uh, so my average price went up slightly and my average profit uh, went up good. So then come 2020, if I can get my total just back up to here, uh, that's good growth. So uh, even though my total sales was less, my per uh, event price and per event job uh, was increased, which was good. And therefore, there's not as much of a difference between the total sales and the total profit, which is good as composed to the prior year. There was much more of a differentiation between the total that I did in sales and the total profit because I was just making less per job. Uh, so anyway, we're going to take that and then these same totals are then going to go into the ending of 2020. So here in 2020 is how I keep track of jobs that are coming up. Uh, so same thing, you know, obviously, you, you know, last year in 2019, I didn't have any events in January. And this year, now that that Myths of Mayhem brand really starts to take shape, uh, it starts uh, getting quite a bit of work. So in January, I had uh, six events. And in February, I have seven, eight, seven events here. Um, so that's really good in comparison to only having uh, zero and then two or three in, in uh, February. Uh, so by the time the end of February comes, I'll have 14 in comparison to the ending of uh, the ending of February last year, where I only had four. So uh, actually three when you factor in that first line doesn't count. So it was 13 compared to three. Uh, so that's that's a good jump in the, the amount of work without sacrificing the price that I'm charging or the um, uh, profit as well. Um, so I did have a couple of nonprofit work, uh, some small events here or there, um, to fill that out. Uh, but anyway, so as this, as the jobs go, they go from confirmed to good. So these are confirmed. And then a little bit later on, you'll see some clients that are pending, uh, certain dates who I'm talking to, maybe they haven't confirmed yet. Um, but as they confirm, there'll be, uh, these pendings will switch to confirms, uh, and then the totals that they book and their deposits and all that stuff will be factored in. And then you just go through that, and then these are some 2021s. You know, then eventually this will be its own work worksheet as we get towards the ending of 2020. Uh, so anyway, that's a, a quick uh, worksheet that I use in um, uh, Google Docs. You can also use an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but anyway, that's a, a, um, a kind of look uh, behind the scenes, if you will, of something that I can really keep track. And the good thing about that is I could just simply quickly organize it so that I could see uh, all the events that came in through Facebook or Google AdWords or return clients. So I can just really quick see those return clients and then I can reach out to them again, uh, especially a lot of those holiday events. Um, and different things like that. Uh, some of the school events, you know, things that, you know, you're gonna hopefully get those clients every year. So uh, that's just one of, the, one of the approaches that I take that I go from uh, the beginning of the year, uh, the ending of one year to the beginning of the next year. So uh, that's been what kind of what's uh, been through my messy desk uh, throughout January and February, going through some of that, finalizing some of those jobs, uh, making sure the clients got all, all the things that, uh, you know, was promised to them, like the albums and the canvas prints and all that stuff, so I can total out those jobs and find out how I did for the end of the year. Uh, anyway, um, so that's uh, the first episode of My Messy Desk. Stick around. I'm going to be doing a messy studio because it did just recently upgrade to the ESRP. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons for um, this new camera uh, and go over some of that. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you the next time on The Messy Desk.